So good morning, Phil, for 15 more minutes. Uh, so this isn't really a training. I just kind of want to uh, give a little bit of information about ArcGIS Pro for those of you that um, are maybe looking to get started with it. Um, is anyone here actually using ArcGIS Pro at this time, for those of you in the room? Not actively. Okay, a few people are starting to use it a little bit. Okay, um, so this is, like I said, just kind of an introduction here. Uh, really what I want to do is just show you some of the functionality of ArcGIS Pro, talk about um, some of the system requirements and things you can do to start using it. And then also I want to provide you with resources so that, you know, when you go back to your office and you're ready to try this out, uh, you, you, you know where to find information. Okay, so uh, we are now at ArcGIS Pro version 2.1, and really what I have highlighted there, the most important thing that I want you to know is that Pro is our desktop product moving forward. So we still do have ArcMap, but there's really no development going into ArcMap anymore. Uh, really the only things that are happening there are just uh, bug fixes and things like that. All of our investment in as far as the technology goes is going into Pro. Uh, Pro is really designed to be integrated with ArcGIS Enterprise. So Enterprise is kind of the way that we are packaging ArcGIS Server now. So Enterprise uh, really means your portal, ArcGIS Server, data store, and web adapters. Um, Enterprise is one thing, and then also ArcGIS Online. So ArcGIS Pro was developed after the advent of ArcGIS Online, so it really integrates well with whatever portal you're using. I'm using portal generically, whether it's ArcGIS Portal or ArcGIS Online. That's a little bit confusing. Um, and then one of the key things is uh, we've made sharing from Pro much easier. It really is kind of the premier application for working with online data. So you can share your map scenes and layers with one click, very simple to do. Um, you can share packages of desktop workflows so that other folks can download that and, and actually use the project uh, that you've created um, on their own desktop. And we can also support multiple sharing jobs at the same time even after Pro is closed. So I just kind of want to provide you with some documentation and then also I can share this PowerPoint. Um, I don't know if there's an email list sir, but maybe we could just email this out so that you have access to these links here. But um, I just kind of want to go through some of these with you here. So kind of the main thing are system requirements. So our documentation has gotten uh, better with the desktop products. Um, so right here, we're just kind of listing out some of the new or changed requirements that happened at 2.1. So if you're upgrading from an earlier version and you just need to know what's changed, you can come right here. Uh, but kind of the key things that I want to point out is if we scroll down here, RTS Pro is a pretty, um, I would say resource intensive application. It's really designed to, to work on a modern uh, computer. So uh, you can see here the kind of the minimum CPU speed recommended and optimal, uh, same for RAM. So minimum of four on the RAM recommended eight. I would say at the very least eight's probably what you should be looking at. I actually, I run 32 on my machine and it runs really well. Um, just different requirements for your display property, screen resolution, storage. You need a good uh, video card. Um, we do support virtualization, so if you're using Citrix or something like that, you can virtualize the desktop. But just be aware of the of the re system requirements here. And also, this is a 64-bit application. I don't know if that's much of a concern anymore. I think most people are running 64-bit machines these days, but um, that is one thing that separates this from ArcMap. ArcMap is a 32-bit application. Uh, this is a 64-bit application, which means it's going to uh, run much quicker. Uh, let's take a look at some of these other links. Uh, so here's a link for getting started with ArcGIS Pro. So this is a nice place to start if you haven't used ArcGIS Pro or you've only dabbled in it a little bit. Um, just kind of a bullet point list of, you know, take a look at the system requirements, download and install. Um, information on how to authorize the license, and I can show you a little bit about this, but we do support single use licensing, concurrent use licensing, so just like we do with ArcMap, um, and then also the named user license as well. So if you want to authorize through Portal or ArcGIS Online, you can also configure it to do that. There's also a helpful link here if you're an ArcMap user that talks about how you can move over to ArcGIS Pro. So it's pretty simple. If you have existing map documents, MXDs, 
you can bring those right into Pro and it converts it into what is an APRX file, a project file. Um, there's some nice tutorials for getting started, um, a link for what's new, a link for Pro terminology. So some of the terminology has, has maybe changed a little bit. So now we're talking about a project file instead of a map file, for example. Um, we also have things like tasks that you can use in Pro. So you can, if there's a common set of workflows that you commonly do, you can set up a, a task and it just walks you through step by step. And you can share that task out with other folks so that they can complete the same task. So what's new um, with 2.1? So if you were an earlier user of Pro and you haven't upgraded to 2.1, um, there's some nice enhancements. So that's one of the exciting things about Pro is with each new release, we're adding quite a bit of functionality. We're getting really close to um, probably 95% or probably 98% parity with ArcMap at this point as far as functionality. And then we're also going beyond that. The goal here isn't to just recreate ArcMap, but to actually take it much further. Um, and, and we've done that now. So some of the highlights, so now you can work with utility networks within ArcGIS Pro. It's an, there's a new utility network tool. So if, you, if you're one of these folks that work in the electric, gas, water, wastewater, tele, telecom space, um, you'll definitely want to check out uh, that tool. Uh, we also have business analysts for ArcGIS Pro now. So if you're a business analyst desktop user, uh, the Pro version is available now. There's a new extension called the ArcGIS Image Analyst for Pro. So if you work with um, imagery, raster data often, uh, this is a, uh, a new extension that you'll want to check out. There's some really interesting things you can do um, as far as visualizing and working with imagery data. Uh, working in the 3D space, we continue to uh, improve the interface of working with 3D and visualizing. Scroll down a little bit here. Uh, metadata, so that's something I want to talk a little bit about. I'll, I have a slide a little bit later on, um, but we've had a lot of questions about working with metadata in ArcGIS Pro. Just know that we do support full metadata standards just like we would um, through the previous version of Desktop. And then a number of uh, new enhancements to some of our editing tools, working with Python, using Model Builder, actually create charts in Pro, and of course, business analyst. So let's go ahead and move on here. So in addition to these resources, we also have um, a Pro training guide, which outlines both paid and free training available to you. Um, I wasn't able to bring it today. Our, our color printer went down yesterday. Um, but we'll send that along with these links if you're interested. Thank you. Good point. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, really now is the time to start working with Pro, but just, just so you know, if you are an ArcMap user, it is supported for six years after the release date. So, um, 10.6 came out early this year, so it won't retire until January 1st, 2024. Um, so, I just want to alleviate those fears that, you know, some people are like, well, ArcMap's going to go away. Well, yes, we're not really developing ArcMap anymore, but just be aware that uh, we will be supporting this for six years from the release date. Um, so that gives you time to port things over to Pro. And then, like I said, there are still a few functions that aren't fully supported um, in Pro. And those are documented as well. So if we take a look at this, tools not available in Pro. Kind of the main ones that um, folks may be using would be the parcel fabric tools. That's something that if you're, if you're using our parcel editing tools right now, you're going to continue to use ArcMap um, until we have those tools available in Pro. And there's a few uh, specific functions within the 3D Analyst tool, a few cartography tools, so adding representations. But um, in some ways, that functionality has been replaced by some different tools in Pro. Um, so just take a look at this. There's just a few specific tools in here that you're, you're not able to use yet. Some of the Network Analyst tools haven't been ported over as well. But for most of your uh, basic functionality as far as editing and geoprocessing, uh, you are able to start using Pro now. I want to make you aware of a new tool. So who in here is aware of our solutions site, solutions.rts.com, or maybe deployed some solutions? A few, few hands here. Okay, uh, so for those of you not aware, if you go to solutions.rts.com, um, we've created a whole set of solutions for state, local governments, and utilities, emergency management, police, and so forth. Uh, 
you can download and use those tools on the website, but we've created the solutions deployment tool, which makes it really simple to deploy these tools with just a few clicks of a button. So this is a free plugin that you can download and install, and it becomes a tab in ArcGIS Pro, and then you just look for the specific tool that you need. So, you know, if you're looking within the local government space, you click on local government, it lists all the solutions, you pick the solution you want, and essentially creates a, an empty uh, schema that you can then load your data into um, as a hosted feature service in ArcGIS Online or uh, hosted on your portal and uh, configures the application for you. So it really uh, takes what was a pretty easy process to begin with and makes it even easier to now use. So uh, this is a great tool that you want to check out. Just some of the things that you know you can really do with Pro. So this is an example of uh, creating a creating a map. So uh, this was done in Davis, Utah. So uh, they had a number of different aerial images, and they were able to use ArcGIS Pro to create uh, this seamless aerial view here. Uh, we also work really well with LiDAR data. So I, I hear a lot more about people starting to use LiDAR data now. There's some really great tools for working with LiDAR and Pro. Um, Arcade, so this is kind of a new expression language. I believe it came out at maybe 1.4 uh, Pro. Um, but this is an exp expression language that helps you for, help, helps you uh, do labeling, rendering, and uh, create uh, symbols based on uh, different uh, attributes within your data. Uh, so this doesn't replace Python in any way, so Python is still going to be used for geoprocessing and automation of tasks and scripting certain things. Um, but Arcade is a nice way to kind of um, automate and set up different types of rendering. Uh, this technically isn't completely new. It's been behind the scenes on ArcGIS Online since uh, 2016, and um, we're supporting it even more now across our platform. For those of you that are Python users, um, just know that Python is supported in ArcGIS Pro. Um, there are so if you're using Python scripts in ArcMap, you can port those over to ArcGIS Pro. Just be aware there may be some minor tweaks you have to do because it does use a newer version of Python. Pro uses version 3.4, I believe, of, uh, of the Python uh, code. Uh, we also integrate with Jupyter Notebooks and SciPy. Um, so this enables you to uh, share some of your tasks as well. And then also, uh, so I wanted to point out metadata because I've had some questions about metadata. So you can view and edit metadata in ArcGIS Pro. Um, so this works across the stack with different data types, whether it's feature classes or project files, rasters, shape files, whatever it might be. Uh, but be aware that by default, the metadata is set to item description only. So that's kind of that item description view that you see in ArcGIS Online or Portal. It's kind of bare bones uh, metadata. You can go into your options, and that's what the screenshot showing. And I can show you this in the demonstration here in a second. You can change it to a different uh, metadata standard. So with that, actually, let's take a look at Pro, and we'll just kind of do a, a tour here. So here I have a project open here, and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go into my project tab here, and I just want to show you some of the um, options um, that you can configure here. So the first thing we're going to, I'm going to show you here is portals. So as I said, ArcGIS Pro is designed to be integrated with ArcGIS Online or your portal. So here, you, if you work with more than one portal or ArcGIS Online organization, you can add multiple orgs here so you can easily access those. As I mentioned, licensing uh, licensing works in the same way as ArcMap. So we have basic, standard, advanced, and all the extensions. You can also, as I mentioned, uh, use three different types of licensing, single use, concurrent use, and the named user license. So that, that's where you would change that right here. So we, we have the flexibility as, as far as how you want to license the product. If we go into options here, so there's a lot of different settings that you can configure here, um, and you can take some time and take a look at these. But as far as you know, taking a look at your general tab, where, do you want to create a new folder each time you create a project? Uh, you can set up a default geo database so that whenever you open a project and you just start working with data, you have a default geo database uh, that you're working on, default toolbox, etc. Uh, you can even personalize the theme. So right now I'm using the dark theme. You can change that to a light theme. So if you work in a 
low light environment, uh, the dark theme seems to work better, less strain on your eyes. Uh, you can set up uh, base maps, your map and scene selection, different editing tools. So if you uh, want to set up uh, automatic, um, if you want your edits to automatically save every so many minutes, you can configure that as well. Um, customize your ribbon. So if there's certain tools you want to have available on your ribbon that are easy to get to, you can set that here as well. Here's that metadata tab. So as I said, by default, it just goes to the item description, which is really that kind of bare bones uh, ArcGIS Online look as far as uh, the metadata, but then you can choose a different standard if, you, if you'd like to. Okay, so with that said, let's actually take a look, kind of a tour here of um, the desktop itself. And I apologize, it's kind of hard to see on the projector here, um, but this is designed with kind of the Microsoft ribbon interface in mind, a little bit easier to navigate. So. I think there's over 1,500 tools in ArcGIS desktop, so uh, we wanted to think of a better way to organize that and make it easier to find what you need. So we've organized it into these tabs here. So you have your map tab, which has basic information about you know adding data to your map, changing your base map, your selection tools, measurement tools, and so forth. Um, so your insert tab, so think about this as a way of adding uh, adding new elements. So I want to add a new map. You can add multiple maps, multiple layouts, multiple scenes to the same project, which is really nice. So you're not confined to just one layout. If you need multiple layouts, you can add as many layouts as you need to this project. Or if you want to work with five different maps, um, you, you can do that right here. Adding toolboxes, folder connections, and so forth. All of your analysis tools are here. So click on this, and this is going to bring up your uh, toolbox. So uh, you can set up a list of favorites if there's some geoprocessing tools that you go to regularly, set that up here, or you have the full toolbox kit here that you're used to working with um, in ArcMap. Your view tools, so this, these are just basically working with the map and bringing up other windows, so you can link views between multiple maps. If you want to take a look at the catalogs, that's one thing we brought back is the catalog view. A lot of people are asking about this, so you can have your catalog view here as well. Uh, works with Python, like I said, so if you want to bring up a Python window, you can, you know, start ty typing right here and you have your, all of your Python tools available right here and you can run that right here in the screen. All these windows can be docked wherever you need them to be. So, you know, in a single screen environment, I don't have a whole lot of real estate, but I could take this and if I had dual monitors, I could go dock this on the other uh, monitor, for example. So it's really designed to work uh, with that multi-display layout. All of my editing tools are here. Um, one thing that I like about ArcGIS Pro is that um, editing is always on. I don't have to start an editing session and pick the workspace that I'm, that I'm in for a given layer. And if I'm changing a layer that's in a different workspace, I have to stop editing, save, choose a different layer to edit. Editing is just on by default. And I can always undo my edits with the undo button, or really anything that I do. So I can always have the undo and redo buttons here as well. Uh, working with imagery, so I have all my raster functions here. And then finally, the share tab. So as I said, this is designed to be connected to your portal, whether that's ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. So just with a couple of button clicks here, you know, I could share a web layer to my portal. Very simple to do. All the tools within ArcGIS Pro are contextual. So what I mean by that is when you click on something, it knows what type of layer you're working with and gives you the right tool at the right time. So if I click on this buildings layer, for example, this is a feature layer. And up here, I don't know if you can read this, but it says feature layer. This is giving me tools for working with a feature layer. If I were to select this ortho imagery, this changes to raster layer. And these are tools for working with a raster layer. So. Uh, just one way to kind of make it easier to find the tool that you need when you need it. We can work with 2D and 3D side by side. So this is a 2D scene here, and we're just looking at some building footprints. But I could also look at the same scene here in 3D. And what's cool is I can dock this side by side and be viewing these at the same time and the same scale. So I have these two maps linked. And I can even edit in the 2D space and see what it looks like in the 3D space. So if I go to my editing, go to create, 
gives me a template here. So buildings are, is the only feature layer I have. I can digitize this mis missing building here pretty quickly. Then I've created that in the 2D space. And then in the 3D space, I don't know if you guys were able to see that, but it, it popped up in the 3D space. So I'm able to edit in 2D and visualize this in 3D. And as I said, I can always undo those edits or redo the edits. When I'm ready, I can always save my edits or discard as well. So that's just an example of working uh, with 2D and 3D at the same time. As I mentioned, you can have multiple layouts as well. So here's an example of a layout. I could add as many layouts as I need um, to this particular project. Let's take a look at another project. So I'm going to go to this address management project and open this. So something else that we added um, with one of the previous releases is the ability to open ArcGIS Pro more than once. So that was uh, something in the early releases you weren't able to do. You could only open ArcGIS Pro one time, and if you needed to change projects, you had to just close your project and open a different project. But now I have ArcGIS Pro running twice here, and I could open it as many times as I need. Just be aware, though, that this is resource intensive. So if you're running different processes and you have multiple tabs open, you're going to be using your computer resources. I want to show one more thing about working uh, with some of the editing tools. So one nice thing about ArcGIS Pro that ArcMap doesn't have is this map topology that's built right into the map. So uh, I didn't create any topology rules or anything like that, but there's some in-memory map topology that's taking place here. Let's take a look at how this works. So I'm in my editing tab. I'm going to go to modify here. I'm going to move this polygon right here. So I'm going to take this guy and just slightly move it. So now the kind of the um, outline of this school property has been moved. Now this is very difficult to see. I apologize on the screen. Let me if I turn off the imagery. Might be better. Okay. Without the imagery. So now you can see the parcel lines no longer match with the outline of the school. And I intentionally did this because I want to show you how this map topology works. So now if I go to my Modify Tools, and I can pick this Align Edge tool, and that takes all of the line work within this particular view, and if I hover over a line, it's going to use the map topology to say, take this solid line and match it with the dashed line on the other side. So if I just click that, it aligns it, it aligned that polygon edge to the other polygon. So that was just using in-map topology. Again, I created no topology rules or anything like that. Uh, this was just taking place within the system. And of course, I could save or discard these edits as well. I'm going to add a new map here and just show you that you can also work with uh, data from ArcGIS Online or your um, enterprise system as well. So here I just added a new map, just kind of, again, proving the point, we can add as many maps as we need to a given project. Um, one thing, while we're looking at this global view, if we take a look at the measure tool, and I measure from, say, Denver to Saudi Arabia, you can see it's actually using great circles. It's not just drawing a straight line. It's, it's smart enough to know exactly uh, what the true distance would be between these two points. So. Um, Kind of a little thing, but, um, but, but but a nice feature. It's good to know that it has that in mind. When I add data, so you can add data just like you would um, an arc map. So I'm going to go to my add data here, and this looks pretty similar to probably how you would interact with adding data in arc map. However, what's a nice feature is I'm connected to my portal here. So right here, I'm signed into my ArcGIS Online account. This could be a portal account. Um, and I have access to my portal content right here, so I could look at my content. I also have access to the Living Atlas, so um, the thousands of layers that Esri has created and curated from various sources, I can pull those in right here as well. So I have access to online content at my fingertips. I'm going to just grab a layer here. 
So I'm going to add this layer, and this is a hosted feature layer in ArcGIS Online. So here I can show you. I have it up. So this is the item detail page from ArcGIS Online. This is a feature layer. It's hosted in my ArcGIS Online account. But I'm bringing this into ArcGIS Pro. I can work with this data right here in ArcGIS Pro. So working with the online data in ArcMap isn't completely straightforward. It's kind of difficult to even add the data. And then if you want to edit it, you have to make a local copy and uh, sync it back up. And um, it's, not, it's not a great process. But here I can actually just work with the data in ArcGIS Pro. So if I want to change the symbology in the map, for example, I can do that right here. So if I want to change that, I can do that right here. If I need to edit this, maybe move one of these locations, I'm able to make that edit right here. And it's just happening. I'm editing the feature service. So I'm not creating any local copies that are now out of sync that I have to you know, worry about you know, what's the latest copy. I'm, I'm editing the live data here. And ArcGIS Pro gives me that ability. If I bring in other layers, again, sharing is very simple. I can share my web map, my web layer, with just a couple of button uh, pushes here. So publish the web layer. And then it just walks you through kind of the kind of the same interface you'd be using on Arc Maps. So what, what's the name? What are you publishing? A feature layer, a tile layer, or a vector tile? Summary and tags, and then you just publish. Really simple to do. All the analysis tools are available here, so I can actually perform analysis um, on this layer, even though this is an online layer. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a local layer or coming from your enterprise or ArcGIS Online. You can perform analysis on this right here. So if I wanted to do a buffer, I could select the buffer tool. The geoprocessing tool comes up over here and just asks for the parameters that I need. So if I want to buffer this, give it an output feature class, say 500 meters, just run this. So I can actually run a geoprocessing tool on my online data. And in this case, it's being stored in my uh, local geo database. The output is That's a pretty small buffer. I don't know if we'll see it. The other thing that we have available here is you have access to the online analysis tools as well. So in ArcGIS Online, you have those analysis tools. You have access to those same tools in ArcGIS Pro. So if I want to generate a service area or do location allocation or find a, a route, sort of path, I can run those tools right here in Pro. Um, so uh, be aware that's using your ArcGIS Online credits. Uh, so it's the same as if you were doing this in ArcGIS Online in the browser. Uh, but you do have access to all of those tools there. So I know that was kind of a whirlwind there. Um, just to kind of wrap up, I know this is kind of quick, uh, but I wanted to stay on time here. Uh, just be aware of some of our resources. So um, I'm going to do actually want to show you a couple of these. The desktop.rts.com page is really a great resource. We've redesigned this. So if you go here uh, at the top, it asks you what product, ArcGIS Pro or ArcMap. If you go into Pro, this is really a great page to get started on. So um, you can search the help here. Um, if you want to get started, here are some lessons, some exercises you can do um, to help you get started. Um, just talking about different things you can do as far as sharing your work, using 3D, performing analysis. So you can dive into any one of these topics here. Um, talking about the ArcGIS Pro SDK if you're a developer. Access to the blog, our online uh, GeoNet. Um, some, some links here, some books that are, are valuable, and actually we brought a couple of books here today. Um, so really, this is a really great resource as far as uh, just kind of getting started. And actually, there's a getting started tab. So this this is the page we were looking at earlier. Um, access to the help documentation. So I think the documentation's gotten much better here. I, I like the way that's organized. So um, I would encourage you to take a look at this. Another new page that we have that I really like is learn.arcgis.com. Um, these are guided lessons um, that you can take. What I like about these is these are based on real world problems. So it's not just, you know, here's a layer and press this button to do a buffer. It actually sets up a problem. So there's an issue that we're trying to solve. How would we do that? So 
Um, we have this broken out, so you could do, you know, if you want to learn more about ArcGIS Online, how to use ArcGIS Online, Pro, or ArcMap, um, you can dive into any one of these lessons. So, um, as I said, this gives you kind of a real-world problem that you're solving. Um, and I, th I think it, at least for me, it makes you think more about the process. You're not just clicking buttons. It's not just telling you to press this button. It's, you're actually having to think about how to solve this problem and actually use the software, which I think is more valuable. Um, so there's some really great lessons in here, not just for ArcGIS Pro, but um, other things as well. So I would highly encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, the community, so this is our GeoNet community. Um, so for those of you that aren't aware, we, we have this GeoNet. Um, you can log in um, with your MyEsri account, and it's a great place to just engage with other users and um, Esri folks as well. So if you have a question, you can type in a question and ask it, or you can uh, look at other questions that people have posed and interact. So it's just kind of a kind of like a social media experience um, for, for Esri users. Um, the blog is another place. Um, we have a lot of great bloggers on our team. A lot of our product managers tend to blog a lot. So blogs.esri.com. You can browse by products. So if you go into ArcGIS, uh, you can take a look at some of the blogs that have been recently posted. So this is a nice way to kind of keep up to date uh, with, with what we're doing. A lot of times the product managers and other folks in the know will post a blog uh, before uh, things are even released live. So nice way to interact there. And then finally, finally the training page. So Nancy mentioned we can share the um, ArcGIS Pro training guide with you that has specific training for pro, but just be aware of the training page, training.esri.com. Uh, you can come in here. Uh, if you log in with your MyEsri account, you can see past training that you've done, but you can also search for training you may want to take. So um, you can kind of browse by product. So if you look at ArcGIS Pro, then this will uh, give you a list of different uh, training options. So there's free videos. There's um, some paid instructor-led uh, courses you can take, and then also there's some kind of uh, webinar type uh, classes you can take as well that are free. And finally, I want to make a plug for the Southwest User Conference. It's coming up here pretty quickly, a um, couple of weeks, April 10th through 12th up in Broomfield. Um, should be a really great conference. We have a lot of folks signed up, so if you're not signed up, we'd love to see you there. Um, Jack Dangerman, our president, will be the keynote speaker, so that's pretty exciting. Um, you can go to the webpage if you're interested in learning more, but there will be a lot of great technical sessions, really good opportunity to engage with other users in the front range, and then we're also pulling in quite a few folks from Utah and Arizona and New Mexico and Nebraska, so uh, pr pretty good regional draw there. So um, if you can make it, we'd love to see you there. Also, um We've opened up the plenary session, so on the 10th, if you know of any students or faculty in the area that are interested in attending, um, it's free for the plenary session that day. Yeah, good point. Yeah, for, for college students and faculty, yep. So that's really all I have. Um, I, I'm in no rush, though, so if there's any questions, I'm happy to take questions, or if we want to take them offline, I can do that as well. I, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, so the first is, in order to use PRO, do you need to be a member of an organization through ArcGIS Online? No. So the question is, do you need to be a member of an organization? The answer is no. So if you're using the single-use or concurrent-use license, it's licensed and authenticated the same way the ArcMap is. It wouldn't require you to log in. Now, you're going to miss out on some of the functionality if you're not a member of an organization, like access to those online tools, or if you're not connected to it, not even online, but just a portal in general. As far as sharing content uh, with the enterprise, you, you do kind of lose out on some of that functionality, but it's not required at all. Okay. And then you talked about near parity with desktop. Mm -hmm. Does um, does Pro have LRS tools? Um, yes, it does now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we added that to a couple of releases ago. Yep. Okay. And the last question is: Is Pro standalone, or do you have to have desktop in order to? Pro is standalone. It, it doesn't require you to have ArcMap. You can have ArcMap, but it doesn't require it. They're two completely separate programs. They don't talk to each other at all. Thank you. Yep. But to that point, um, they're, they're both included with your desktop products. When you buy ArcGIS desktop, you, you get both ArcMap and Pro. Um, later this summer, we are going to be releasing a, just a standalone Pro version 
um, that's not coupled with desktops. So you'll be hearing more about that later this summer. If you have folks who are non-desktop, you know, non-current users, perhaps new users who just need access to Pro. There is a question online. Um, yeah. Are there any utility network Esri classes available? I don't know that. Um, we could check the training site. These are new. To the the tool for Pro are new. Um, We could follow up um, with whoever asked that question. Yeah, that sounds fine. Because um, I actually don't know the answer, so I'm just looking here. Do you know Arches Utility Network Management, Geometric Networks? Um, as far as I assume it's specific to the new tools, I don't know. Um, but we could definitely find out and follow up with whoever asked that question. Anything else? If there's nothing else, um, I'm happy to hang out for a few minutes. Um, you're welcome to come up here and ask questions, or if there's anything you want to see, I'm happy to show you. Um, but otherwise, I appreciate your time, and thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate that.